In this video, let's talk about how Aximetry is making virtual production a lot easier and more accessible. All right, I'm here with Jamie, and we're going to talk about Aximetry. Yes. Uh, so, Jamie, give me an overview. What is Aximetry? Man, Aximetry is like the best virtual production software out there for the price, in my opinion. You know, if, if you're a YouTuber, if you're a narrative filmmaker, or even a, like an broadcast environment, it can be tailored for any of those needs. And, and the price of Aximetry is just crazy cheap, right? has a great chroma gear, has great AR capabilities. It's just one of my favorite pieces of software. That's awesome. And when would you want to use Aximetry and when would you want to use Unreal? Or what's, what's really the different use cases? You know, for me, Unreal Engine is awesome. We love Unreal Engine, but when you're in a quick production environment, it's great to have something that's a little bit more production friendly, right? Mm -hmm. And so the way I describe Aximetry to people, it's more or less a top layer over Unreal Engine that just makes it really easy for a production environment. You don't have user friendly. Absolutely. You don't have to go into like blueprints of Unreal and, and do camera inputs and all this stuff. It just works, right? So you, you make your base scene in Unreal, bring it into Eximetry, and it's really easy for the layperson to bring in camera inputs, change out backgrounds, and doing chroma keys. You know, keying in Unreal is okay. Uh, the chroma keyer in Eximetry is one of the best I've ever used. And I've used Ultimap, Primap, all of them. And it's just amazing. That's awesome. Also, you can bring in your scenes because we did an interview with CopyZilla and he said he brings in his scenes, uh, rendered Blender scenes. Yep. Uh, so like, what are you, it doesn't just have to be Unreal, you can have other options. Absolutely. Eximetry DE stands for dual engine, right? So they have their own internal engine. So a lot of folks are creating sets in Blender and bringing that in. And it's a higher quality set. You know, reflections are cooler and, and their internal engine is so nice and so smooth. It goes up to, you know, 60 frames per second, you know, no glitching, nothing. But, you know, for a lot of folks, Unreal Engine's great just because of the vast marketplace, right? You know, if you need a, a 1940s car, you know, uh, you can find it on the marketplace, throw it in Unreal Engine and you're ready to go. And that's what I love about it is the flexibility of both using Blender and Unreal Engine. So. Yeah, and uh, this year Xmetry has some updates. So, what are some of the uh, some of the updates right now? Coolest updates is now you can run plugins without source code, right? So, we've been experimenting a lot with NURS, you know, newer radiance fields, which we love. So, the ability to go out with our iPhone and use Luma AI and capture a volumetric scene, bring it right into Unreal, right into Xmetry, and the plugin absolutely works now. You don't have to like use it in a live link mode or anything. You can totally use it in the cooked mode, and the ability to like like I said have have, have a background, have a location that you've shot. And, and to redo that without any worry about environmental noise, raining, or a plane going overhead is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, we've been uh, looking at a lot of nerfs, cautious flats, and so like, tell me more about what you're doing in that realm. So you're scanning scenes and then bringing them into Eximetry and you can just film. Absolutely. And it's something that looks like a real location that you shot? Absolutely, yeah. And the really cool thing is when you, when you, when you put that in combination with Mars Vive, you're able to do really cool things like, you know, actually zoom in on your talent and rack focus and you know have a little bit of bokeh in the background so have a little camera movement so it really really looks real to the eye you know which is awesome and it looks you know i sort of like that approach better than you know using a lot of the stock sets that you see it looks you know still looks a little gamified so you know going into the nerf stuff really really is cool i find yeah that's really awesome yeah. um and what do you think about more uh kind of content creators youtubers getting into virtual production I think right now is the time, especially for Eximetry, because right now they have a free version that you can download for a year. You have it free for a year. They just introduced a product called Eximetry Eye, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah, tell me more about Eximetry Eye. Uh, Eximetry Eye basically turns your iPhone into a camera and a real tra and a real time tracking uh, system. So we've been using it a lot for previs, like when we want to set up the whole studio with our Mars system. If we just want to try something out real quick, we could fire everything up like in five minutes and we could like have somebody in a virtual scene just sort of checking out camera shots and angles and how's this going to work. And once we sort of get that narrowed down, we'll set up our full Mars Vibe system with our higher end cameras and then, you know, replicate, reshoot that stuff. But for YouTubers, I think it's absolutely great because that quality uh, to me is perfect for streaming and the ability just to, you know, get free software and you know get the free app it's on test flight right now but you can get it really easily and just have that flexibility to build a virtual set and have movement in that virtual set real movement is just mind-blowing yeah is the app is it running the scene on the phone or is it kind of sending the video back to a computer running app symmetry it's, it's, it's basically using srt so yeah. and sending uh the video feed srt to Eximetry. and so you're sending your green screen to Eximetry. Eximetry is doing the processing but the cool thing is 
you get a full uh, rendered image back on your phone as well. So you have your full output on your phone. Sure, so you're seeing what you're filming there, your virtual world. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty crazy. You know, it's yeah. like, what's going to happen in another three years, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned you used it for previous, but also I, I think you had a demo on your channel too of like a detective uh, scene shot or on Xmetry channel shot in, uh, on the iPhone. Yeah, yeah, we've done so much. I mean, we just like to play. You know, when we have downtime, we'll just we'll experiment. We'll play different sets, different lighting conditions, you know, and, you know, we've probably scratched probably 5% of the surface of Xmetry. There's so many things you can do, you know, with, with ArcNet. You know, ArcNet is a great thing where you know, you can take RGB comp compatible lighting and actually change the light to the lighting of your set, right? Uh, then you- So this mapping, sort of mapping image-based lighting around your, yeah. your environments, your lights around your set. So if you is, change the, the color of your light in your virtual set, it's gonna change the light, your real light, you know? And then when you get really geeky, you can throw like a Mars tracker on it and actually have movement on that light, you know, position your light and it's like, you know, I'm a big video gamer. Yeah, I love playing games, and this stuff is just so geeky for me. We just like to play sometimes, right? I mean, it's like being in a virtual world in the holodeck. Well, it's like you know when you're a kid and you had like you know you had that little pack of crowns that was like 24 crowns, and your buddies had the big pack that was 96, 60, yeah. 96 <laughs> with the with the sharp yeah, movement. Yeah, that's what this feels like, right? We we've got we've got the full crown pack. So yeah. Uh, were there any other updates? Uh when yeah. I can trade this year? Yeah, yeah. There's some updates updates in the broadcast realm. You know, they've introduced a MOS uh, upgrade for like newsrooms to, it's basically a character generator type of thing. And then they've also introduced uh, a new compound that allows broadcasters to have up to eight augmented reality uh, cameras uh, on sets. So that's really cool. Oh, so each camera can be tracked to like a different angle in yep, the same yep, set? Yep, in augmented reality. So you can have like aug augmented reality supers, you could have and it, it is works, and especially when you like put it in combination with a system like Mars. Mm -hmm. And you know that's what I tell people. Like you know, in a big you know post production houses, it's like they might not have the money, you know, two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand dollars to invest in a in a virtual production system. You know, you look at this, and you look at Mars and Xsymmetry, and it's like for under ten thousand dollars, you can have full blown, very capable system, and and it's just mind blowing. And you know, when I met both of these guys, it's like. It's like, you know, symmetry is like peanut butter and Mars is like chocolate. <laughs> and, and together they're a Reese's peanut butter cup. They're just amazing, right? And I'll eat it all day. <laughs> so. And so how did you personally get into virtual production? You know, we're, we're a traditional post-production facility. And, you know, and it's amazing. When I've talked to a lot of people at NAB this year, everybody sort of had the same response. They're like COVID. You know, when COVID happened, when the pandemic happened, everybody, the business just died, right? And even though we're sort of in the, more in the narrative uh, field of uh, video, I had a lot of friends that were in live events. Mm -hmm. And all the live event production just totally stopped. There was no more traveling to big cities to do these big events. And so they called me and they was like, hey, dude, you know, what can we do? What can we do to do these virtual productions? And that's when I started looking at options. And then I found, found this company out of Budapest, Hungary, that just made this great solution, right? And at the time, some of these guys, you know, Portland-based or New York-based, you know, they were looking at the skies. They were looking at all these different, you know, products, you know, because to integrate with their with their live events, and they tried some of those, and they were having like crashing problems and just issues integrating it in, and so we were able to do just some great, successful, really awesome live events streaming, you know, for with bringing in people from all over the world. And, you know, we, we, we were bringing in students from like over a hundred different countries and, you know, we'll, you know, bring it in live and we streamed live for over two hours. We never had a crash that we had. And so then at that point it was like, okay, Xsymmetry is awesome. What else can I do with this? And that's what I love about the product. It's like, no matter what your focus is, if it's live broadcast, if, if you're, you know, you know, filmmaking or, or just playing around on YouTube, you know, I mean, it's just, you can do it all. It's great. It's, it's just a matter of how deep you want to get into it. And yeah. for me being a geek, you know, it's like, okay, I can set up a virtual camera. I don't even need a tracking system if I don't want. I can set up a virtual camera. I can then just have like any kind of like small tracking device, even my phone, and I can emulate a camera move, right? Just by tracking. If I want to do a, a fake zoom and focus, I can assign that to a, a MIDI keyboard, right? Right within Xsymmetry, it's so easy. It's like, I just click one button and just hit it and it's there. Versus if I tried to do that in Unreal Engine, it would be a totally, totally different process. You know, it would be, okay, I have to go into this blueprint and I have to, you know, and with Xsymmetry, it's just like, it's done, right? 
And that's what I love about that it. That's awesome. And what are the, uh, the three different options for uh, Axiometry? The three different options, you have Broadcast DE, which is the, the, the top end for like, you know, broadcast facilities. And it's, oh. yeah, yeah, that's, that's right around 5,700. There's another one for smaller studios, which is around 2,200. And that's the one that I have. And then once again, you know, they have a free option, which is absolutely amazing. You know, it'll, it'll have a watermark, but that's cool if you want to experiment. And I highly suggest just to download it and play with Eximetry Eye because it's, it's a game changer. It really is. Now, I will say, you know, on the newer iPhones, they tend to overheat a little bit. So you're going to want a little cooler. And, you know, and I've got some links for that at some point if anybody wants to know what those are. But we've really, you know, we've tested that. And like I said, it's so much fun just to, you know, to pre this something. And I really feel that once again, it can be, it's totally perfect for YouTubers. It really is. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jamie. Thank you, Thank you. And that is it for this video. Be sure to check out the rest of our NAB coverage over here at this playlist and hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next episode.